Hey, I'm Mandy from Deep Lizard. In this episode, we'll be preparing and processing a custom data set that we'll use to fine tune MobileNet using TensorFlow's Keras API. Previously, we saw how well VGG16 was able to classify and generalize on images of cats and dogs. But we noted that VGG16 was actually already trained on cats and dogs, so it didn't take a lot of fine tuning at all to get it to perform well on our cat and dog dataset. Now, with MobileNet, we'll be going through some fine tuning steps as well. But this time, we'll be working with a dataset that is completely different from the original ImageNet library for which MobileNet was originally trained on. This new dataset that we'll be working with is a dataset of images of sign language digits. There are 10 classes total for this data set, ranging from 0 to 9, where each class contains images of the particular sign for that digit. This data set is available on Kaggle as grayscale images, but it's also available on GitHub as RGB images. And for our particular task, we'll be using the RGB images. So check out the corresponding blog for this episode on dblizzard.com to get the link for where you can download the data set yourself. So after downloading the data set, the next step is to organize the data on disk. And this will be a very similar procedure to what we saw for the cat and dog data set earlier in the course. So once we have the download, this is what it looks like. It is a zip folder called sign language digits dataset master. And the first thing we want to do is extract all the contents of this directory. And when we do that, we can navigate inside until we get to the dataset directory. And inside here, we have all of the classes and each of these directories has the corresponding images for this particular class. So the, what we want to do is we want to grab 0 through 9, and we are going to control X or cut these directories. And we're going to navigate back to the root directory, which is here. We're going to place all of the directories 0 through 9 in this root. And then we're going to get rid of everything else by deleting. So now, one last thing. So I'm just going to delete this master. I don't necessarily like that. So we have sign language digits data set and directly within we have our nested directories consisting of zero through nine, each of which has our training data inside. Then the last step is to move the sign language digits data set directory to where you're going to be working. So for me, that is relative to my Jupyter notebook, which lives inside of this deep learning with Keras directory. I have a data directory and I have the sign language digits data set located here. Now everything else that we'll do to organize and process the data will be done programmatically in code. So we are in our Jupyter notebook. Uh, make sure that you do have the imports that we brought in last time still in place because we'll be making use of those now. Um, this is just the class breakdown to let you know how many images are in each class. So um, across the classes 0 through 9, the, there are anywhere from 204 to 208 samples in each class. And then here I have just an explanation of how your data should be structured up to this point. Now the rest of the organization we will do programmatically with this script here. So this script is going to organize the data into train, valid, and test directories. So recall right now we just have all the data located in the corresponding classes of 0 through 9, but the data is not broken up yet into the separate data sets of train, test, and validation. So to do that, we are first changing directory into our sign language digits data set directory, and then we are checking to make sure that the directory structure that we're about to set up is not already in place on disk, and if it's not, then we make a train valid and test directory right within sign language digits data set. So next we are then iterating over all of the directories within our uh, sign language digits data set directory. So recall those are directories labeled zero through nine. 
So that's what we're doing in this for loop with this range 0 to 10. That's going from directory 0 to 9 and moving each of these directories into our train directory. And after that, we're then making two new directories, one inside of valid with the directory for whatever place we're at in the loop. So if we are on run number zero, then we are making a directory called zero within valid and a directory called zero within test. And if we are on run number one, then we will be creating a directory called one within valid and one within test. So we do this whole process of moving each class into train and then creating each class directory empty uh, within valid and test. So at this point, let's suppose that we are on the first run in this for loop. So uh, in this range here, we are falling at number zero. So here on this line, what we are doing is we are sampling 30 samples from our train slash zero directory because up here we created uh, or we moved the, the class directory zero into train and now we are going to sample 30 random samples from the zero directory within train. Then, so we're calling these valid samples because these are going to be the samples that we move into our validation set. And we do that next. So for each of the 30 samples that we collected from the training set randomly in this line, we're now going to be moving them from the training set to the validation zero set, uh, to the validation set in class zero. And then we do similarly the same thing for the test samples. We randomly select five samples from the train slash zero directory and then we move those five samples from that train slash zero directory into the test zero directory. So we just ran through that loop using the class zero as an example but that's going to happen for each class zero through nine. And just in case you have any issue with visualizing what that script does, if we go into sign language digits data set, now let's check out how we have organized the data. So recall we previously had uh, classes zero through nine all listed directly here within the, this root folder. Now we have train, valid, and test directories. And within train, we moved the original zero through nine directories all into train. And then once that was done, then we sampled 30 images from each of these classes and moved them into the valid directory um, classes. And then similarly, we did the same thing for the test directory. And then once we look in here, we can see that the test directory has five samples for zero. We see that it has five samples for one. If we go check out the valid directories, look at zero, it should have 30 zeros. So we see that here, 30. So every valid directory has 30 samples and the training directory classes have uh, not necessarily uniform samples because remember we saw that the number of samples in each class ranged anywhere from 204 to 209, I think. So the, the number of images within each class directory for the training sample will differ slightly by maybe one or two images, but the number of images in the classes for the validation and test directories will be uniform since we did that programmatically with our script here. So checking this data set out on disk, we can see that this is exactly the same format for which we structured our cat and dog image data set earlier in the course. Now we're just dealing with uh, 10 classes instead of two. And when we downloaded our data, it was in a slightly different organizational structure than the cat and dog data that we previously downloaded. All right, so we have obtained the data. We've organized the data. Now the last step is to pre-process the data. So we do that first by starting out by defining where our train valid and test directories live on disk. So we supply those paths here. 
And now we are setting up our directory iterators, which we should be familiar with at this point, given this is the same format that we processed our cat and dog images whenever we built our CNN from scratch and we used the fine tuned VGG16 model. So let's focus on this first variable train batches first. We are calling image data generator dot flow from directory, which we can't quite see here, but we'll scroll in just a minute. Uh, to image data generator, we are passing this pre-processing function, which in this case is the mobile net pre-processing function. Recall we saw that already in the last episode, and there we discussed how this pre-processes images in such a way that it scales the image data to be rather than on a scale from 0 to 255 uh, to instead be on a scale from minus 1 to 1. So then on image data generator, we call flow from directory which is flowing off the screen here. And we set the directory equal to train path, which we have defined just above, saying where our training data resides on disk. We are setting the target size to 224 by 224, which recall just resizes any training data to be uh, a height or to have a height of 224 and a width of 224, since that is the image size that MobileNet expects and we are setting our batch size equal to 10. So we've got the same deal for valid batches and for test batches as well. Everything exactly the same except for the paths differing to show where the validation and test sets live on disk. And we are familiar now that we specify shuffle equals false only for our test set so that we can later appropriately uh, plot our prediction results to a confusion matrix. So we run this cell and we have output that we have 1712 images belonging to 10 classes. So that corresponds to our training set, 300 images to 10 classes for our validation set, and 50 images belonging to 10 classes for our test set. So I have this cell with several assertions here, which just assert that this output that we find um, or that we have right here uh, is what we expect. So if you are not getting this, then it's perhaps because you are pointing to the wrong location on disk. So a lot of times if you're pointing to the wrong location, then you'll probably get found zero images belonging to 10 classes. So you just need to check your path to where your data set resides if you get that. All right, so now our data set has been processed. We're now ready to move on to building and fine tuning our mobile net model for this data set. By the way, we are currently in Vietnam filming this episode. If you didn't know, we also have a vlog channel where we document our travels and share a little bit more about ourselves. So check that out at the Blizzard Vlog on YouTube. Also, be sure to check out the corresponding blog for this episode, along with other resources available on deepblizzard.com. And check out the Deep Blizzard Hive Mind, where you can gain exclusive access to perks and rewards. Thanks for contributing to Collective Intelligence. I'll see you next time.